Welcome back to the next installment of Sir Sam. Today we delve into the adventure of Sir Sam trying the sword and how he tries to wield it like he's in an epic battle. So without further ado, let's get started. Now for the long awaited sequel to Sir Sam tries the sword. Trigger warning, your jimmies will be rustled. Player number one, Lady Saber. A 16-year-old exchange student from Belgium, very avid fencer. I've been doing it for 10 years. Coupled with my Lord of the Rings and Song of Ice and Fire nerding, I'm a neckbeard smosh. Player number two and three are my fencing coaches, Mr. and Mrs. Coach. They're a husband and wife couple. They're really fabulous people, super dedicated to the sport. Mr. Coach is a large European mammoth of a man, and he sounds like a thunderstorm. He looks really intimidating, but in actuality, he's a teddy bear in disguise. Mrs. Coach, she's almost as small as I am, but she can still roar like a lion. She tolerates no BS and is intent on making everyone perform better. Player number four, Smooth Cheek Sir Sam the Chaste and Chivalrous. He's the whitest knight of all, fat, sweaty, and with a high-pitched voice. He has the personality of a nervous Pomeranian, except with more nervous quivering and nervous hate. He wears New Balance sneakers, plus 10 to speed and 5 health, cargo pants, plus 20 to carry, I'll story babe, make me a sandwich, t-shirt, and a navy blue trilby with a feather in the band, combined for a plus 35 negging. He also smells like he bathed in Axe chocolate spray cologne, but still unable to mask the scent of rancid meat sauce. A small note about the setting, the short wall on the end of our gym functions as a rack for practice weapons. It's somewhat for show, but the weapons are fully functional, so the people who rent gear can use one. If you haven't read the first story about Sir Sam Tries the Sword, go do that. Seriously guys, stuff that I talk about here will make a lot more sense. This story takes place a week after Christmas break, on a Wednesday afternoon. School is back in session, and is fencing practice. I received a very nice fencing glove for my host family, so I'm intent on practicing with it. I have the same setup going with my looks as described in the previous story. No makeup, hair tightly wrapped up out of the way, workout clothes for a minus 10 attractive stat. Funny thing, Sam hasn't once told me, you look naturally beautiful this way. Like he's always relentlessly plugging. I arrive an hour before practice, earlier than usual. Instead of running in the freezing cold rain, I'm in the gym, putting Mrs. Coach to shame on the leg machine. We each take turns upping each other until it gets close to practice time. Mr. and Mrs. Coach go to set up, and I cool down with a short walk indoors and a drink of water. Sir Sam doesn't show up for warm-ups. Wednesday is the one day of the week that he signed up for practice, but I'm not surprised that he's avoiding me, or has just realized that copycatting my interest won't score him any points. I'm not complaining. I get into my zone, and I have a lot of fun. Instead of conditioning warm-ups, we play dodgeball, and I'm about as unstoppable as a smitten neckbeard's affections. We're suiting up for drills when Sir Sam arrives, about as welcome as a fire marshal at a dorm party. His hair is so greasy that rain is just beating up on top of it. About half of our class are girls, so they're eyeing him with venom. Sam is oblivious, but senses a bit of awkwardness in the air. He tries to break the tension with some light humor. Here I am! I just showed up for the fun part. The coaches hate when people do this. It's impossible to actually improve your form when all you want to do is show up for the last 45 minutes of swinging a sword around. They won't get on your case for this, of course, because you've paid for the full lesson. And if you continue to stink and you keep coming back for more, they'll let you. Mrs. Coach doesn't want to get near Sam. So Mr. Coach takes him to get rental gear. Mrs. Coach is explaining the drill to us when they both return. The Sabre group is an odd number again, so I sit the first round out, dressed in my uniform with my mask off. Mrs. Coach asks Sam why he skipped out on warm-ups today, and this was Sam's excuse. Well, last time the warm-ups made me really tired, so I couldn't free fence hardly at all. Yes, that's the idea. If you keep doing them, eventually you won't be so tired and... 
But if I'm exhausted, I can't practice the actual fencing, though. It's annoying, because I want to do better at sword fighting, not doing lunges and footwork. Well, lunges and footwork are only 80% of fencing anyway. Who needs it? Okay, Sam, let's get you warmed up before you do drills. Give me two sets of advances and retreat. What? I'm already in my uniform, though. Good, it will help you warm up faster. Mrs. Coach has no patience for lazy people. I can tell she's straining. But I had asthma as a kid. If I get too hot, I can have trouble breathing. And I haven't had an inhaler or breathing treatment in forever. I don't think it's safe. Sam, a few sets of footwork won't kill you. I've got to teach drills, so let's go, okay? Game on point as usual, Mrs. Coach. Sam is a little miffed at Mrs. Coach that she has no concern for his well-being. I'm the one paying you, so technically, I should be the one in charge. And I came here to fence, not do some stupid drill. Mrs. Coach is two inches from snapping, so she gives it up. You're right, Sam. Grab a practice foil and jump in with your group. She turns on her heel and goes to instruct others. Sam is smirking like he just won a free pizza for outwitting a fundamentalist Christian. He swaggers to the wall of practice weapons and is drawn to the sabers. I'm standing directly behind him to his right, watching out in the corner of my eye. He wraps his sausage fingers around the handle and he draws it out of the rack. He's holding it with a two-handed death grip. Nowhere near how you're actually supposed to hold a saber. I can see his imagination wearing away. Sir Sam is a Japanese samurai warrior in the midst of an epic battle. He takes a small down cut to split his midget opponent in half. Dang it, no one sees it that's totally epic. His next challenger is cut in half through the middle by a slow motion side stroke. There's an enemy behind him, so he spins with the force of a great typhoon to decapitate his foe with one fell swoop. Unfortunately, he doesn't see my lady standing in the line of fire. It happens fast. I see the blade coming down towards me, getting bigger and bigger. I try to turn away, lean under the cut, but the weapon connects with the side of my face. There are two things I remember most about the impact. One is a sickening crunch, and the second is a blade dragging through my skin, scraping against bone as Sam pulls away. To call a saber, or any fencing weapon, blunt as a butter knife, would be an understatement to the sharpness. It's nothing more than a rounded piece of iron with a flattened tip. However, if you take two pieces of iron and bang them together more than a thousand times, they'll get some ragged edges, not to mention hundreds of tiny magnetized shavings clinging on for dear life. My memory is a little bit fuzzy after the hit. Everything runs together in a slurry of Mountain Dew and meat sauce. I got to ride in an ambulance. That was fun. I remember laughing because the siren sounded weird. It's clear again when I wake up in a hospital bed. There's gauze over both eyes with little pinpricks in the center so I can see out of. The TV is terrible. Even if I could see the whole screen, like some sick joke, my Little Pony is the only show that comes in 100% clear. The rest is crappy reality TV, local news, and soap opera reruns. All told, it's an impressive list of injuries. I took a fracture on the outside of my eye socket, had a third degree lateral concussion, my brain went ping pong from side to side. The laceration that was caused by the saber needed stitches. The weapon itself scratched my cornea and left more than a dozen fragments behind my skin and a few in my eye. Some came out with a magnet and the others had to be picked out. They put me under for this, as a number of those fragments were trapped under my eyelids. I spent the night in the hospital after getting hit. Once it was clear, I didn't have any permanent brain damage or swelling, so I went home the next morning. I was on some wicked strong painkillers for the next few days. My face from my cheek to my temple swelled up, and it throbbed for the rest of the week. I avoided mirrors for a long time. Sir Sam sent me flowers. I didn't read the card, but I wish I had. I'm sure it would have been great material. Additionally, even though what he did was an accident, Mr. and Mrs. Coach knew that I could have easily sued the pants off of them and disallowed Sam from fencing at their club anymore. Sam, or at least Sam's mom, had to pay to replace my fencing jacket, underarm protector, and lame. About $500 worth of gear. 
Both the LeMay and Jacket were covered in blood and compromising the electrical components of the LeMay. EMS cut the underarm protector with shears. The cut scarred. It started out as thick as a thumb, bright pink, and run from the corner of my eye to the middle of my temple. It's receded a lot since then, faded to pale white, but it's not going away any further. I spent a long time being ridiculously self-conscious about it. Now I think it looks pretty awesome, but it took me a while to get there. I know this story was more feels than funny, but squeezing humor into this one. Felt like I was forcing Cheese Whiz back into the tube. So I cut the awkward cringy stuff out. Now next in the series, Sir Sam tries out feminism. But we'll cover that next time.